Well, uh, at least, unlike Melissa Santo, I know how to center myself. Oh, I forgot I said that. Hello, folks. Welcome again. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And, well, Melissa Santos will never be my girlfriend if she's married to Brian Cage. I can say whatever I feel like saying about that. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some professional wrestling. Um, I do apologize for not getting my Raw show up uh, yesterday or this morning. It was one of those things I had to work the two jobs. I think I was working from 7.20 a.m. until 9.30 p.m. And then I went to the gym. And when I came home, I'm just like, boom. So I went to sleep. But I did manage to catch the backup version of Raw, which was actually pretty good. Um, and, of course, tonight, because it's Tuesday, I saw my Impact Pro Wrestling and the new thing, NWA Power. Uh, NWA Power is... Okay. I'll probably continue that through the year. And if there's no conflict... I might check out some of their pay-per-views. I may or may not. I don't. I wonder how strict they are. Do I want to find out? Let's see, December, January, February. So that's. I don't know. I'll. I'll, I'll think of something. Right now, also unlike Melissa Santos, I have notes. I do have food. I, I got my little can of soda here. Soda, folks. Yeah, it's it's only Tuesday. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And wow, it was interesting. Again, it's one of those shows. This was the opposite of what it's been in the past. The wrestling, with the exception of the last two matches. The last two matches were great. Every other match, yeah, and the backstage segments were actually, ah, uh, no, I don't want to say that because Lana's is just terrible, terrible. Um, it was okay. Again, if you're gonna watch Raw, I definitely recommend probably the last hour or so. Everything else was meh. Oh, also. I just realized this. JT, thank you very much for co your comment. Yes, Monster actually really is a very good wrestler. He's exciting to watch. I enjoyed this match. Just for you, JT, you're going to get this six count.
So that being said, let's get to Raw. And oh boy, do I have a lot of work to do t tomorrow. I gotta like clean up my hard drive. Because I just realized I live a little pie chart over here. And yeah, the one usage thing's getting pretty big. So let's talk about the Iconics! They're always fun to talk about. Um, Becky Lynch was cutting a promo. The Iconics come out. They're great. Billy Kay, Peyton Royce. I remember their names at the time. They actually come out dressed in similar Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Oi, 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 outfits. I do like the fact they're all decked out in the Australian flag uh, bikini and weird middle cut thing. Hey, it worked. And they have the Australian flag on them because they're Aussies. And all Australians are awesome because they talk funny with the exception of the New Zealander I work with whom I have a better Australian accent than she does. And all Aussies are pretty cool. Bushwhackers were cool. Bill Dundee was cool. Crocodile Dundee was cool. I like that. So they come out and interrupt Becky Lynch. And then Charlotte Flair comes out. She has to make her presence felt. Yeah, whatever. And we were treated. This was the best part of Raw. Samoa Joe. Da -da. Joe, Joe, Joe. Ba -da -da. Ba -da -da. Joe, Joe, Joe. Ba -da -da. Samoa Joe. And actually, he might be wrestling because Bob Tinder actually took his team. Now that I heard Samoa Joe's theme, because when Bobby Tunde came out, you can listen to this on my on the previous video I put up Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. When I put up my NXT live show here in Daytona Beach video. Bobby Tunde comes out, I'm like... Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Like, I've heard that before. It's been so long, we've actually seen Samoa Joe wrestle. I forgot Samoa Joe's theme. There was no... It, it wasn't the Godzilla theme, but it was pretty close to. And Samoa Joe theme was the best. The Samoan submission machine. The left hand of God. What else was one of his monikers? But Samoa Joe, he added so much to all the commentary. Samoa Joe, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Samoa Joe's best commentator. If he he's been injured a couple times, if he actually has to go into the broadcast area, Samoa Joe is the best. So that would be interesting to hear stories between him and Jerry the King Waller. And then Michael Cole can kind of moderate stuff. So that makes sense. I've, I've Vic Joseph still has to go work on stuff. And, uh, yeah, the other guy has to heal up and recover. But let's talk about this match. It was, we had uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair taking on the Iconics! Uh, this was actually a kind of fun match. For the most part, I'll tell you what, Becky Lynch took, took a good deal of bumps in this match. And I was surprised. The Iconics were actually booked fairly strong. Um, it was also, it wasn't that long of a match. It wasn't a slog fest, which is good. Because sometimes WWE puts on slog fest of matches. That's not so good. This match, however, was different. This match is actually pretty good. Again, the, the timing just felt right. Uh, Billy Kay still has a pair of lungs on her. I want to know what she sounds like. In, in the, that has to scare cat. Wake the neighbors. <laughs> terrible, terrible thought. I need a girlfriend, folks. Um, I am working on that. Constantly working on that. <laughs> Again, Billy Kay. Anyway, Billy Kay is some. She delivered some good knees too. That was, that was fun to watch. Uh, Peyton Royce is no slouch either. She's really good. Uh, eventually, Flair does make the tag. Uh, she puts. She kind of 
ends the match early. She puts Billy Kay into the figure eight. Billy Kay taps after her. No! Ah! Listening to her scream is almost housing. That's not good. Or is it? The cold's getting to me. And the lack of sleep is getting to me. Uh, but again, this was a fun match. Uh, so Billy K does tap out to the figure eight that Charlotte put on her. Again, a fun match. Um, and then all of a sudden, NXT shows up. NXT. NXT. The NXT women show up. We have another NXT invasion angle. Um, they start to fight in the crowd. Becky. Becky did something. I forgot. But. Becky leveled. Oh, yeah. Becky just like back some security guy. Enhancement talent, folks. Again, this was this was actually fun, especially with all the stuff going on. This is a good cheeseburger match. Then we had Ryder and Hawkins. They show up for a promo. I guess they won something in Germany. And they said, oh, we won our title shot. And AOP just shows up and, and destroys them. Good for AOP. It's good to see them back. And they're at least not talking, not like destroying people. Now they're destroying pro wrestlers, which makes sense. OC cut a promo. That was pretty good. And then we had Carl Anderson taking on Umberto Carrero. That was actually fun. And <laughs> the crowd must have heard all these, the um, stuff about CM Punk being on the one WWE Talking Smack show or, or whatever talk show they do, CM Punk was there because they, they were chanting, CM Punk, CM Punk. AJ's trying to hush him. He's like, he's not going to show up. AJ does speak truth, though. I don't know. That would be, I wonder, I wonder how much money it would take to see, to see a CM Punk AJ Styles match. Indeed. Uh, but for this match, Umberto Carrero versus Carl Anderson. Uh, Carl, for the most part, holds his own in, for the most part of the ring, uh, most part of the match. I mean, Carl Anderson has always been supposedly one of the best wrestlers. We just haven't been able to see his talent focused. He's great at taking pins, great at taking bumps, but this actually showcased Carl Anderson a little bit, and that's always good to see. Um, what else? He holds his own. And of course, until Umberto gets his comeback, which always happens. <laughs> and then Umberto got caught doing flippy stuff, which is always good to see. Carl Anderson is a cerebral wrestler. Carl Anderson, however, does take the pinfall. And I can't blame him for this, and I really can't blame WWE for this, because this was actually kind of creative. So towards the end of the match, of course, Umberto goes up. So, so AJ is on, on one side, distracting the... I think it was AJ. It might have been uh, Luke Gallows on one side. AJ's on the other side. So once Luke Gallows has the ref distracted, AJ shoves Umberto Carrero off the top rope. And then the Street Profits get involved. So they even the odds. They distract said referees. And Carl Anderson is the victim of a distracted wrestler roll-up. All wrestlers have to work on that. So Alberto Carrero goes over. I'll tell you what, it was it was it was a good match. It was another cheeseburger match. Then there was a Seth Rollins promo. Seth. Why, Becky? What? Besides the money and the fame, why? 
Then Lana was there. She has a restraining order against Rusev. She has to learn how to ditch that Rusev accent, that fake Russian accent, the rolling of the R's like a Russian. Actually, I don't even know if Russians roll the R. I know Spanish people do. They roll the R's because I can roll my R's better than most Puerto Ricans, which is probably terrible. Um, and then that's led to uh, Bobby Lashley versus No Way. Jose, no way, Jose. It's always good to see No Way Jose on TV. He was fun in NXT. No Way Jose gimmick obviously has some limitations, though. Um, twenty four seven belt at best. Uh, no Way Jose kind of starts the match fast, but Bobby Lashley finishes finishes the match even faster. Uh, he finished it with a full Nelson slam, which is good to see. So, so now he has something different than a spear, which is good. Um, and no way Jose is probably too big for the delayed standing vertical suplex, which still is an amazing test of strength. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll mention that next. But it was a squash match, but no way Jose being the jobber. He got his licks in. This is a ham sandwich. And then, oh my my. Did we ever get a makeup session with Lana? Lana has that fine bootay. Not a fat ass. And, and not the pH kind either. There's a fat ass. Just being a fat ass. There is a difference. Learn voice and fuck, folks. Then we had Seth Rollins taking on Andrade Cien Almas El Ilo. This was so fun. I'll tell you what, Samoa Joe, I, I can't say this enough. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Samoa Joe is is best. <laughs> Scott Steiner is probably most entertaining, but Samoa Joe is best. I need to get a notebook too. This flimsy paper stuff doesn't work. Doesn't sign up for it though. But again, with this, as Lena Vega comes down, cut, cuts the promo. For this match, it would have been. This is actually kind of a fun match until Seth gets involved. Um, yeah, saying that in Seth Rollins' match is kind of redundant because Seth reverts to Wrestle Mania, arm bars and headlocks. I don't want to. Luckily, I could fast forward through the five minutes of arm bars and headlocks of Seth. It's, so the match seemed a lot, lot slower. But then my question is Seth, Seth can run like a racehorse, Andrade is amazing at speed. Why do these two have to have such a slow plodding pace? So it's not fun to watch. And it's a it's a slog to watch. Um, uh, Vega eventually does distract Seth. And actually Seth fi someone finally the good thing that Seth did is that someone finally caught Selena Vega. Because Selena Vega's 90 pounds, soaking wet in hockey gear. Seth, granted, he's probably 210, 220 maybe? Yeah, a 90-pound woman shouldn't be flinging around a 200-pound guy. Physics don't make sense. This, however, does make sense that, that Seth actually caught her. said, ah, 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 don't do that. She's like, you can't touch me. Yeah, guess what, Selena Vega? Don't jump into it. Don't wrap, don't wrap your legs around Seth's head. <laughs> that sounds so bad. But we'll see more. We'll hear more about that later. Um, yeah, Seth. That's okay. Uh, Andrade, he does get, he does get off. He does reverse the buckle bomb once. But not the second time. That's always good to see. 
Uh, he did the three Migos into a near fall. And then, wait a second. This is an all around death to finish, baby. You know why? Because the Lucia House Party come, come in. They jump Paul Seth Rollins. And you know what that means? Seth Rollins loses. And then, because the Mexican luchadors, Andrade was like, what's up with that? And then they jumped Andrade. So they're from SmackDown, because they had their SmackDown shirts on. Lucha House Party beat them up. I don't know. It was just a ham sandwich of a match. And then, oh wow, this is, we have Buddy Murphy. He knocked on the door because he wants to pick a fight with Alistair Black. Instead, right now, um, he knocks on the door and then kind of walks away. It's like, well, we'll I have a match now. And then Alistair Black, who's knocking my door to pick a fight with me. Uh, so, at the ring, we have, I'll tell you what, it was Akira Dezawa, and I keep on forgetting his name. Ha! 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 Akira Dezawa versus Buddy Murphy. Oh, and then we also saw Triple H get out. But, um, Akira Dezawa and Buddy Murphy, 205, 205. I feel kind of sad that they did away with 205. I mean, those, and they just have the cruiserweight belt for the most, I think it's on NXT. Although it would be interesting if someone from NXT won the cruiserweight, if they switch brands every so often just for the cruiserweight, like they said they would do, like they, like they said they would do for the women's title. But yeah, we've seen how that's gone. They did that with a cruiserweight tile. That would actually make amazing sense. There are a bunch of smaller guys they could placate Oni Lorcan, depending on NXT. I think he enjoyed NXT more. I don't know. This was fun, though. I mean, so much of a contrasting match versus a Seth Rollins wrestle match. Um, they do. They do wrestles, but they do wrestles with purpose. Put them in a headlock, stand up, go against the ropes. Do a lot of chain wrestling from wrestles, but you're in a headlock for like two seconds. Get that reversed. Arm bar for two seconds. You're constantly moving. Yeah, a second or two difference. You don't have someone in a freak in a headlock saying, yeah. Okay, I'm going to do this for three more minutes. You know what? The crowd's loving it. I'm going to do it for five minutes now. No. Uh, again, so two of five ish. Akira Tozawa, he's so good. Especially when the pace picks up. Buddy Murphy, and even in 205, Buddy Murphy was known to slow the pace down. It, it makes sense, though. Buddy Murphy is built a lot more muscular than Akira Tozawa is. Akira Tozawa is a flyer. Uh, he was he did the senton to lower back. All Akira Dizawa is it needs is the headbutt to the wrist, and his moves that would be complete. Um, Murphy hit Murphy's Law. That was an amazing match. Or actually, well, not amazing, but a really good match. This, however, was a surf and turf match. And that brings us back to the door. And Alistair Black picks his head up. And I, I forget if they said anything, but they just stare at each other. So, therefore, they're going to have a match. And that should be actually pretty fun. Uh, then it was Braun Strowman versus um, Jabra McJobbers. I don't know, he had colorful tights. Then the Bollywood Boys and R Truth shows up. Oh, Rowan, I'm sorry. Yeah, Rowan. Yeah, I said Braun, I'm sorry. I meant Rowan. Goes up versus Jobber and McJobbers, and, and he brought his cage still. I don't know what's in that cage. I say it's a snake. They're, re they're reviving Jake the Snake Roberts' gimmick. Uh, this was a squash match. The Bollywood boys show up, show up run around the ring. R Truth chases them. R Truth's like freaked out by stuff. Maybe it's a cat. <laughs> That'd be terrible. Poor kitty cat. Has to be exposed to all those 
wrestling fans. Isn't a terrible cheese pun? Yeah, my cat's down there taking her little cat nap. Oh, wow. I gotta hurry this up. Hurry up this process a little bit more. So I still have work I actually have to do. Or it means I do work tomorrow. Um, so for the most part, Rowan does a splash. He, he kills, he kills the Bollywood boys and Jobber McJobbers. It's a squash match. I mean, Rowan does the iron claw slam to the guy in the middle of the ring. It was fun though. Maybe because of the 24 seven stuff. It's a ham sandwich. And then we have a Randy Orton promo. So then next we have our Randall Orton promo. Just said, hey, don't trust me. And, wow, that was actually a lot of notes I took. Into the dustbin. My daddy was a dustman. He wears his dustman pants. Then we had Kevin Owens versus Drew McIntyre. Oh, this was the match that we never got in NXT that we should have gotten. This was fun. Um, this this is, again, there were chops and fists. They just go at each other, which is awesome. Uh, Drew, when it starts off as a brawl, it gets tossed out the ring. It starts to be coming out outside of the ring. That makes sense, though. Drew McIntyre's manly man. Kevin Owens is everyday, man. So that's, that kind of makes sense. Drew's just a freaking brawler and a half. When they're brawling, Drew gets the better of it. When it's more of a wrestling match, Kevin Owens gets the better of it. That makes sense. Indeed. Um, let's see here. So, so for the most part, it is a brawl. Uh, he, he, tossed, he literally tossed Kevin Owens from the ring apron into the barricade. That looked amazing. Uh, to counter that, Kevin Owens eventually collected himself to the cannonball to the outside onto Drew McIntyre. Amazing. Uh, Kevin Owens, again, get, he gets beat up a lot more on the outside. Uh, he rolls in after a nine count, which is pretty good. Eventually he comes in, again, collects himself, frog splash, but Kevin Owens, nope. Drew McIntyre kicks out of that. The pop up power bomb onto Drew. Whoa. Drew McIntyre kicks out of that too. That's awesome. All this time, Drew McIntyre is actually evading the stunner because the stunner is the most devastating move next to the surprise, next to the distracted roll up. Uh, then he, then Drew McIntyre hits the claymore on Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens gets his foot on the rope. Good stuff to see. And then Drew McIntyre eats the stunner. However, for this stunner, they're too close to the ropes. Drew McIntyre gets his foot on the ropes. Oh, fight forever. This is great. Um, eventually, Drew McIntyre hit a double arm DDT. Uh, Kevin Owens did come back, I think, with a final stunner. I think from the highlights, I was kind of skipping through stuff, and I was getting ready for the gym a little bit. I want to say Kevin Owens won this match. But then, again, got beat up by some NXT people. So, but again, overall, I'll tell you what. This is why I say the, the end of the show was kind of the best. Oh, minus the next. Well, even that match was kind of fun. But this was a surf and turf match. And then Triple H gives a promo. Oh, yeah, that's right, because after the match, Triple H gives a promo, and he has the Forgotten Sons, Donovan Dijakovic, and Damian Priest to back him up. And he gives Kevin Owens kind of the ultimatum, and they just start to beat up Kevin Owens. Fight, Owens, fight. Then there's a promo, or just like a congratulations to Alberto Carrero by Kyla and Paul Heyman. Gives a promo, and Rey Mysterio gives a promo, because I guess Dominic's sons 
he looked like he was in wrestling gear. He's like, I'll go out there and fight Brock, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Um, Ray's like, no, I'm going to take him on. And I think that match is going to happen in Survivor Series, so that should be pretty fun. And it's nice, and it's a little bit different that they're not doing a champion versus champion match. Something different. Then we have Asuka versus Natalia. Um, again, Asuka is so good at talking Japanese. She, she could be telling Natalia in the ring how many ways she enjoys to cook cabbage. When she says it angrily in Japanese, give me more cabbage recipes. That's just so cool. Uh, Natalia again. She is she, most most of the match. She gets beat up. Oscar goes into like submission machine mode. Oscar can stretch like anything. It's really good. Eventually, Natalia does get her comeback as usual. Uh, it's that that weird like setup front kick. Discus, elbow or forearm, whatever that thing she does. I think it's a discus forearm. Could be a discus elbow. I, I don't know the the difference. Well, I know there's a difference, but you can't really see it. Um, and then <laughs> again, they go to the outside for a little bit. Io Shirai distracts now. You know, he just, just drops poor Io Shirai. Asuka, of course. Beats up Natty a little bit, tosses Natty back in the ring. She goes out. Oh, she just kicked Natalia in the head. Oh, Oscar wins. Probably just by concussion. But, eh, that was okay. It doesn't. It's just saying, yeah, Nat, Natalia's still around. It's a ham sandwich. And then in the main event of the evening, we have Randy Orton and Ricochet taking on the Viking Raiders. Oh, wow. I think Ricochet teamed with War Raiders once in New Japan. Don't think he ever faced the War Raiders. Because Ricochet was part of Taguchi Japan. And Taguchi Japan is like the goofy faction. So, so they might have faced the War Raiders. They more than likely, I think, the War Raiders teamed up with Taguchi Japan in one of their like ten men tag opening of Wrestle Kingdom or Sakura Genesis matches. But it felt like a New Japan match, and for some reason, I think Randy Orton was enjoying them. So, if Randy Orton ever does leave WWE, he might wind up going to New Japan because I think he he would actually fit that style really good. Then he does all the stomps and everything, the RKO out of nowhere. Then on Naito, and if Naito had a real reason to lose, at least I don't know why they job on Naito so much. He's freaking awesome. Randy Orton versus Yano. <laughs> oh, Yano would just frustrate the heck out of Randy Orton. Yano could eat a loss from Randy, Randy Orton and probably enjoy it. And Randy Orton would probably really enjoy that because it's something different. <laughs> then the Viking Raiders probably enjoyed it too. I want, I want to know how Ivar can, can flip like Ricochet. I understand how Ricochet flips. I don't understand how Ivar flips. So that's freaky. But what we got here, folks, we have got ourselves a dust that finish, baby. Nobody wins. Everyone gets beat up. And it's everyone in the pool, baby. But I'll tell you what, before I get into the specifics of it, this was a really good dusty old cheeseburger. Then um, NXT show up. They beat up everyone. RKO is for everyone. SmackDown shows up. Everyone in the pool. And that was an episode of SmackDown. 
Again, probably the first half of sh- probably the first segment. Not even the first segment. It has to be after triple. <laughs> oh wait. It does have to be. After Triple H shows up, the show gets better. Coincidence? For a cheeseburger show? I don't know. That is something to ponder, though. Would Triple H showing up just make stuff better? Indeed. Well, now it's time to take a little break. Is this running? Oh, yeah. It says stop capture. But now it's time to talk about Impact Wrestling. Now that we're back from our little break. Remember, this is like a triple tri- triple feature show. Impact's really fun. I don't know what it is about Impact. They just they do their women's division right. NWA actually kind of does their women's division right, too. So I can break this show down in two halves. You have the normal show, and then you have the gauntlet. The gauntlet takes up like a whole hour. Which is really good. So the show starts off. Um, it's a tag team four way. I wonder what they're going to do with this. <laughs> it's just going to happen. I, I, I'll get to that later. That's just funny. But <laughs> uh, I can't even say it with a straight face. I wonder if the Rascals are going to hold all like the minor belts because I know Trey. Has a shot at the X Division belt. And based on what happened in this match, some team could have. The Rascals. Spoiler alert! Could have a shot at the tag team belts again. So it starts off with the Rascals. So it's a, it's a four way dance. The Rascals versus Desi Hit Squad versus the Deaners. Woo! Versus Reno Scum. I'll tell you what, it was neat in the fact that their tag team division is actually pretty good. The men's division is so-so. The really good is comparable to the really good of AEW and WWE. Impact, I don't know, they're, they're, they're building their tag team because you always want to know who, they're, who the next tag team is. The thing I like about this is that Either one of these four teams could have won it. And you're like, well, who's going to win? Is it going to be the Rascals? Well, well, Trey's mom's there. But the Desi Hits squad, they've been getting heat from Gamma. And the Deaners, they're, they're the Deaners. And Reno Scum, they've actually held the belts before, I think. So it's one of those things you're like, I don't know. Who's going to win? That's good because it's not predictable. And that means I want to watch it. I want to watch it. That's a good thing, folks. Uh, so we start the match. <laughs> I think eventually every team in the first five minutes gets involved with double team moves from every team. It's fun. And who could win? It's unpredictable. It's good. <laughs> Reno's comes the best. Only because they did the they stole the Butch Wackers battering ram. I like when I see moves that make, make me chuckle from my youth. Like the Butch Wackers battering ram. That's, that's fun. And they did the uh, 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 pity <laughs> which is what the nasty boys used to do. <laughs> Don Kels and Josh are like, I don't want to get my face in there. There's probably hair stubble. It probably hurts more than skin tags. <laughs> Skip tags, oh! That was just funny. Don Callis and, 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 and Josh just seem to really enjoy it. They have amazing chemistry. They might be the best commentary team around. I mean, minus anyone you pair with Samoa Joe. Gee, Don Callis and Samoa Joe <laughs> with, with Scott Snyder as ring announcer. Oh, that's the dream matchup. 
I think, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no, that's for Thanksgiving. I think that's a Thanksgiving special. No, it's dressed up like people from the 80s. That's funny. But I'll tell you what, this was fun, though. It's a fun tag match. Eventually, everyone gets in the pool. Um, everyone starts flying all over the place except for Rahik Raju. <sighs> he just, he's just like, no, I'm not going to do a die for you people. But then Wentz knocked down Rahik Raju. So Rahik's on all fours by the ring. Uh, Wentz flies off the back of Rahik. Big cousin Jake flies too. He's a big guy. They need all those boys there. All those young lines there to catch Cousin Jake. Yeah, and it was just fun. Uh, the hang spring, hand spring, hang, uh, hand spring, springboard tiger drop by Des was amazing. And the Rascals win because they did their light up, which is kind of cool. Um, eventually, they, they do get that. And I'll tell you what, this was an amazingly fun match. Before I get to the, the spoilers at the end. But the Rascals win in a surf and turf match. Then the Rascals get jumped by Reno Scum. So Trey shows up. And every so often, they would show Trey, Trey's mom in the crowd. They're going to do some, some ridiculous angle. I wonder if that's really Trey's mom or... Oh. Could be. I don't know, though. If it's not Trey's mom, it's a porn star actress's name, Demi. Big boobies. She's old, but she's hot. And you did not hear that from me. I don't know stuff about that. But, um, so again, Trey comes and makes the save against Reno Scum. And then Aust then Ace Austin shows up. <laughs> he's going to have a new Ace Austin. He's going to have a new Austin 316. Austin 316 says, I just banged your mom. That's so terrible sounding. Oh. And then we have a match. Um, uh, handicap match. Taya and Johnny Bravo takes on Jordan Grace. Fly, Jordan, fly! That's awesome. She's she's an amazing woman, and I'm very somewhat happy for her engagement. It's just one less woman. For me, that's all. Um, Bravo eventually gets worked over a lot, and Ty just... I don't know how else to put this, folks. Ty just slaps her in the tip. Like... But, like, right in the middle, too. Like, she just, like, slaps her... Like open hand downward motion, not 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 chop, but just yeah, titty slapper. Only thing, I, only way I can describe that. Um. <laughs> Ty, Ty gets sick of this match a little bit again. Being the, the heel woman who wants to keep her belt, she she starts to leave. Leaving Johnny Bravo in the ring, uh, Johnny Bravo picks up a stuffed toy dog with a band-aid on it. Uh, he throws it at he throws it at Jordan Grace. Or I forget, Jordan Grace somehow got I know she grabbed it out of his hands probably and just punts it in the crowd. And people booed her. She booed her for kicking a stuffed toy. Um, eventually she dropped Johnny Bravo and hit a running Vader bomb. Jordan Grace wins. This was fun enough. This is a ham sandwich of a match. Jordan Grace is really too good to be in these, these these popcorn matches. She doesn't quite have the comedic chops like Yano does. Although no one has the comedic background like Yano does. Though. Yano's the best. Who in the WWE? No one. Wow. Peter Avon tries way too hard. Yano does it so naturally. Then we have the Greek Dominant in the back. He he 
He littles the Desi Hit Squad. They see Falabala. Falabala is just like sitting on the steps eating his food from catering. Because I've heard interesting things about Impact's catering. If you ever see, if you ever go to YouTube and listen to the AJ Styles interview when he first came to WWE, he said, the one way you can tell how good a company is, is by the catering. And WWE has great catering. He hinted at the fact that Impact or TNA did not have great catering. They would get the the ham sand. They would get the ham sandwich, whereas WWE has like prime rib. Big difference. Uh, so they beat up poor Falabala and RV, RVD. RVD's like, I lied. His like eyes like shut. I don't know if like he got in a fight or just stoned out of his head. He's had a fool. It's like, yeah, you know, I need my ten hours sleep. I didn't want to wake up. And, and Kate, Kate, Katie, put your clothes back on. I can't sh- I want to see Katie Forbes naked. A lot of people would just see Impact would get a lot more viewers that way. That was probably the most watched part about all of Impact last week was Katie Forbes just jiggling her ass. Um, so RVD's great, though. He's like, listen. I'm done. Then Susie. 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 Susie sees a sinister minister. James, whatever his name is. He, <laughs> I wish I could do this. I wish I could just see some 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 hot Asian woman and tell her, yeah, my car's in the back. Why you, when you go to it? I would say, yes, I trust you. So Susie goes in the back, then Rosemary shows up and says, you know, our father. So I guess Rosemary and the sinister minister are related. That's kind of weird. Um, and I guess her father is the devil! Devil! The devil! Right, Chispa? Devil! I'm so tired of hearing Satan. I've heard that, I think, 20 times at one Christian service. Wow, this is bad. But that's a whole other issue. And if you guys hear about that, one day maybe. Uh, post, I'll post that on YouTube. Um... But yeah, she's like, no, she's still ours. Susie's cute, though. <laughs> Even the dinners think, like, she got cute. Uh, that's funny. Then the raffles are backstage in the treehouse. <laughs> of course, there's all the, all the smoke there. <laughs> and Trey's mom shows up and says, yeah, I've partied once or twice. <laughs> Trey's embarrassed. <laughs> oh, um, she said this wrestling's tough. She she told Wentz to go call her. His mother's like, I don't have my cell phone with me. Um, a does try to get, get get up, but um, something was going on down, well, going up down there. For Des and couldn't get off because he was embarrassed. He was very. Oh, that was so funny though. That's why I think my eye is just because I found my contacts in all day long for 12 some odd hours. Um, yeah, that, that's why I think Trey's mom's a porn star. And we'll see something from Austin 316. I just banged your mom. That's, that's just funny. Um, then we have. Johnny Swinger takes on Buck Gooder Song. That just sounds like a classic wrestling name. That sounds like again some some like wrestler like from the like the deep south in the seventies, or like Texas or like Oklahoma, Nebraska, somewhere. The most part was kind of a basic match, classic wrestling match. Um. 
the only thing he was missing, he did a headbutt. He had he, did, he had a headbutt, a, re, a reverse falling headbutt to the back, a headbutt to the groin. The only thing Johnny Swinger had to do was was a headbutt to the wrist, and then we would have ourselves a proper wrestling match. He did the back rake? Uh, Johnny Swinger eventually hit the hit the hit the Swinger neck breaker, and really a ham sandwich match. And then Ken Shamrock shows up because Johnny Swinger thought thought he would rib the new guy. You, you, you don't you, you you do not rib any guy that like took on Gracie. And if the last name is Shamrock, do not want to drop a number two in their back. Very. Yeah, so Johnny Swinger got, got got the heck beat out of him by Ken Shamrock, and then we see Johnny Swinger coming backstage talking talking to all people with Joey Ryan. Oh, those two are are, are the perfect tag team. Oh wait, they are the perfect tag team. Impact's going to have a, sta- a fairly stacked mid-card tag team division. Indeed. And then we get to the elimination matches, which is the same thing as saying a gauntlet match. But gauntlet match would be gimmick infringement because only WWE can take gauntlet match. So it starts off with Moose, Moose, Moose. And Daga, um, with this, with this, this was a fun match. I guess definitely the faster, more agile. It is a flying flippy stuff. Um, it was a handstand springboard moonsault. I got that right. Um, it was a fun match. Again, Moose would slow it down. As typical as, as Moose would do, being the much bigger, stronger wrestler. Uh, for the most part, it was a well-paced match, though. I mean, when it was fast, Dog was in control. When Moose slowed it down, he was in control. A good back and forth between the wrestlers. Um, Moose hit, Moose missed the go to hell, but hit the Jack Hammerless Spear on Daga. He gets the win. He gets to move on. This was a good match. This was a cheeseburger match. And like all gauntlet matches, I'll review each match. I'll give the overall match a whole rating. So the next person out was Rich Swan. And they weren't, and the Canadians weren't chanting moose. They were chanting deuce or douche. I don't know. I don't speak Canadian. I speak three languages English, bad English, and drunk English. So I don't speak tongues. I don't speak Canadian. I don't speak French. My Spanish is limited to no mas, uh, no tango dinero. And comida pollo y cerveza. So I can tell people I have no money, but I eat chicken and beer. I can say yes, no more. And I can call women senoritas and senoras. And como esta ustedes? Como se dice? Mi amo Tom. Mi amo el hobo Tom. That's the only that's that's all that's that's literally all the Spanish I know. So don't come looking for me for Spanish lessons because that's it. Uh, so with this, it was fun. Um, again, a slower pace. Again, Moose already had one match, so it makes sense for him to carry a slower pace because he already beat up, got beat up a lot. Again, Rich Swan is much better when it's faster pace. Makes sense though. Uh, Moose sold that hurricane, though. He was selling things left and right. Uh, now, ru- they wrestle on the outside, so, so of course Moose beats him up, goes in, tries to get the 10 count. Rich beats the 10 count into the ring, I think around 8 or 9. Uh, Moose just got... <laughs> he just got hammered. Uh, he actually kicked out of a springboard cutter, the lethal injection. 
does Moose, Moose's toughness. Uh, Rich Swan eventually did kick out of the go to hell. And Rich Swan won by a crucified pin, which is a, a version of a roll up. Uh, kind of took Moose by surprise. Moose was not happy with that. And then Rich Swan advances, and again, another cheeseburger match. And then true fashion because the heel lost. The whole crowd goes, whole crowd goes, na 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 na. Hey, goodbye. Na 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 na. Hey, goodbye. Moose was not happy with that. Then Big Mike Elgin stepped in the ring, and oh wow, and Rich had that. Why me look? The why me look. Yes, everyone's seen the why me look. Like when your boss shows up and says, I want to see you in my office. What did I do this time? Or, or what didn't I do? More than likely, it's, it's where did I screw up this time? But again, this was another... This was actually pretty fun. Um, again, Rich Swan's pretty well spent at this point. Uh, I thought Rich Swan died because they would like start off with a hockey fight. The dive by Rich Swan. <laughs> Rich Swan almost he actually countered the burning hammer. That that would have been ending the match right away. Uh, he got dropped by Mike Elgin. It's like you're like. Because he hit, and I was no, that wasn't that match. But, but at one point in the ring, like Mike Elgin dropped, him and Rich Swan just looked dead. Uh, both men eventually got to the top of the again. I always check for a position. Um, again, Mike Elgin always would always go for the power bomb. Rich Swan would, for the most part, try and counter it. However, there there was a time where. Rich Swan was stuck in the corner. Mike Elgin just began to beat the snot out of him. And he just began to power bomb him. And just the uh, superplex was amazing. And I'll say, yeah. And, and for some reason, Rich Swan like, like bit a ketchup packet. Because that's how bad it looked. It wasn't blood. It was way too thick and viscous for blood coming from the mouth. It just, and when it hit the ring, it's like, that's ketchup. Have that weird, like sugary look to like you can tell the difference between blood and ketchup. But Mike Elgin would not stop beating him. He beat him and beat him and beat him some more. And you know what that means? We got ourselves a a DQ, baby. But this is that that's the old cheeseburger. And it was fun. Mike Elgin, he was pissed off at somebody. And then so Rich Swan's in the ring, and Brian Cage shows up. And everyone's like, oh, Rich Swan is going to just just give up. And Brian Cage is like, really, Rich? And Rich Swan, no, he, he, he just started to attack Brian Cage. Bad news for Rich Swan, though. Now, uh, Rich Swan, eventually they, they got uh, tossed to the outside. I mean, Brian Cage actually. Is this it? No, I oh, no. Oh, that's the next match. But, like, Rich Swan went for a sunset flip pin. And, like, I don't, even know, I don't even know what to call it besides Brian Cage did just a head and neck lift flip. Uh, Rich Swan did hit a four feet splash. Again, Brian, this is Brian Cage. He kicked out of that. Uh, hits the lethal injection. That, and out of cut of nowhere, he's, Brian Cage still pick, kicks out of that. Uh, Cage actually beats up Rich Swan more. He, he, he's, he bites down another ketchup packet. So that's what it looked like. He just looked all beat to hell. Rich, Rich Swan was amazing in this match, though. Um, eventually, Brian Cage hits Weapon X. End of match. Meh. A cheeseburger match.
Then the final part is when Tessa Blanchard shows up. And wow, <laughs> Brian Cage is like, you really want to do this? And Tessa starts like punch Brian Cage. No effect whatsoever. Uh, she would try to clothesline Brian Cage. Not working. Shoulder tackle Brian Cage. Not working. Uh, cross body Brian Cage. Not working. For the most part, Brian Cage, for the most part, just tosses Tessa around like a rag doll, which is pretty good. <laughs> they, they went to the outside of the ring, and Tessa's like, yeah, I, I want to fight you on the outside of the ring. It's like he, He's like, okay. That's when he said, okay, you want to play now. So Cage catches Tessa. She tries to jump off the ring. Cage, <laughs> Cage catches Tessa and up fives her on the apron. Um, eventually, again, Tessa tried another crossbody. Brian Cage just goes like curls her. It's like, oh, yeah, this is my bicep workout. I don't need to wait. I just bicep. I just Twice of curl women like Tessa and Melissa, my beautiful wife Melissa Santos, who does too much. Curl. You didn't hear me say that though. Um, Tessa eventually gets the Magnum. It's pretty good. Uh, Brian Cage kicks out at nine point five. Tessa goes for another Magnum. So for Brian Cage catches her, tosses her. And Tessa actually wins with kind of modified roll up. Only way, trust me, Tessa was ever going to win was a surprise Brian Cage. Again, this is another cheeseburger match. And overall, the Gollum match was actually pretty fun. Um, Rick Swan kind of hammed it up a little too much for me. And and watching Tessa beat Brian Cage is, is, is really not realistic. But overall, the Gollum match, eh, it was a cheeseburger of the series. And that means this show, Impact Wrestling, was actually on par to Raw and a cheeseburger of a show. So now it's getting a little on the late. Wow, it's getting a lot on the late side. I have to get stuff done. There's one more show to do. It's time to take another break. And now it's time to talk about some NWA Power Hour. Um, I think on nights when I have to do this triple show, I think I'm going to stop doing triple shows only because. It's, it's kind of late, but I'll do this. This, or I'll do it a couple times, a couple more times, maybe until the beginning of the year until I get like, into a groove with the NWA. Again, this will just beat the heck out of me between three jobs and doing this for free. Monetize me. Um, so NWA Power Hour starts with Nick Aldis. <laughs> uh, they talk about Camille to <laughs> the audience. The audience really makes this show. Because some guy, some loud guy says, They're just friends! Whoa. Camille Pot, too. She has a little, a little booty on her. Yeah. Uh, so it starts up. Nick Aldis takes, takes on Trevor Murdoch. <laughs> Trevor Murdoch's great. Uh, we saw him last week. In the opening match, he looks like they, someone they took out like a Texas bar or Oklahoma bar, Nebraska bar, some bar from, from cow countries. After he just had a steak and probably way too many beers. Um, it was fun. Nick Aldis puts Trevor Murdoch in a headlock. Then he puts Thompson's way out. And then Trevor Murdoch being the much larger guy. He gets him the arm bar. Goes the shoulder to shoulder and into the hammer lock. Nick Aldis reverses it. Again, good chain wrestling. Uh, then, then Murdoch started to throw heavy right hands. He body, body slammed him like Poor Nick Aldis, like, three times. Body slam mania. The full Nelson slam, and then a bulldog from off the top of the rope. But Nick Aldis is by the ropes. 
He gets his foot up on the rope. Um, I don't know why Trevor Murdoch tried to do this. He tried to do a missile drop kick, and he seemed to slip. I hope that was expected because, or he's not used to doing it because Nick Aldis tried to sell the catch of the leg and put him in the Texas Cloverleaf. And Nick Aldis, even though this was a non-title match, still wins. And I'll tell you what, NWA is not bad. It has that old school AWA feel. This was a cheeseburger of a match. Then we have the Rock and Roll Express doing a promo, and the Outlaw drop a promo. Some, some guy named Danny Deals. Are they trying to rick off, rip off a um, holiday Harry land of effing holidays used cars? And Barry Broadworth from Steve here and Larson's Fuck Wrestling? Friendo Unified Championship Wrestling. I don't know. There might be some gimmick infringement there somewhere. They should sue for a pile of money. Give me a founder or consultancy for reminding them of this. I'll take a shiny quarter any day. Um, but the next match was, was Ricky Starks versus a question mark. From either parts unknown or unknown parts. I like that. Uh, <laughs> this is funny. This is a popcorn match, but this is a popcorn match done right. Because a question mark. Judo chop. Judo chop. <sighs> chop. That was funny. He does like the Mongolian uh, spike. Where he hits with like the neck with like these two knuckles and this. I don't know. It's like the old-fashioned Oriental Spike. Uh, again, the judo chops. Again, uh, Starks, Starks makes his comeback. And it's a little bit more of a wrestling match then. They wind up on the outside of the ring. They just deliver clubbing blows. And to everyone's surprise, Aaron Strong comes in and starts to beat up Ricky Starks. Cole Cabana says, I, might write, I'm, I must write this wrong because Cole Cabana actually came out to sit on commentary. And he is Cole Cabana. And this was ruled a no contest. I'll tell you what, it was fun, it was entertaining, it was quick. Let's say a ham sandwich. Then Eli Drake comes out, uh, does a promo, the crowd doesn't care. The crowd just chants, question mark, question mark, question mark. And then, Mr. Anderson. Ken Anderson shows up. And he just beats up Ken Anderson with a turnbuckle. That's assault in most states, folks. And then, oh, wow. Oh, I have to mention that. That was funny. You had Allison K and Ashley Vox taking on Pandrosa. 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 And Rosa, cha cha cha, and Marty Bell. <laughs> Again, um, Ashley Vox seemed to give her jacket to to Jim Cornette, and Jim Cornette says, "Like, oh, I must be mistaken for a valet. Only if you're an old school fan of wrestling do you actually know what valets are." Uh, I don't know. I just heard Mama Sita. I don't even know what Mama Sita means. I don't even think it's appropriate for me to ask any of my Hispanic female co-workers what Mama Tita means. I make it fire. That's no joke. I can't say you have a great tissue, sweetie. That would get me definitely fired. <laughs> what, what was it El Drunko said? You have a nice looking tuchus. Or something like that. I forget. I even said that. Well, El Drunko said that. Again, be careful, especially if El Drunko meets up with the corporate Tom in the Daytona Beach Bumfight League, which we'll see again for Thanksgiving Day. Or 
Yeah, happy drunk skinning. And I'll get into that video later. Um, so again, the, it was a standing switch into a drop toe hold by Allison K. I love it when I see real wrestling holds. That, that always bumps up the rating a little bit. Uh, Marty Bell again. Being the heel, she's, she's going to be heavy striker, not so much to wrestling. I'll tell you what. Uh, they did the double team where the, where the one person, where Thunder Rosa put her foot up. Mm. Marty Bell drove Allison K's head into said foot. Oh, again, old school NWA action. It's always fun to see. And again, there was a hair slam. And wow! That was a kick right to the tits. What is the theme for tonight? Is it just like slapping women's tits or something? Booby strikes. Uh, Fox eventually does make the comeback. Allison K gets a hot tag. Her and uh, Thunder Rosa get into a hockey fight. There's a superplex. Allison K superplex Thunder Rosa. Then Melina shows up. And once I saw that, I'm like, oh, there's going to be a distracted wrestler finish. And guess what there was? There was a distracted wrestler alligator clutch by Thunder Rosa on to uh, Ashley Vox, who is the NWA Women's Champion, I believe. Uh, Thunder Rose is happy. Marty Bell is happy. They beat up Allison K and Ashley Vox more. Melina gets in the ring. And then someone like plays a drum. I don't get that drum. But this match was fun. Um, I guess it's another good cheeseburger match. Then there was something about a kayfabe cocktail by Austin Idol. That just sounds terrible. And then we have our main event of the evening here. We have Colt Cabana and Ricky Starr sticking on Aaron Strong and the question mark. Uh, for the most part, it starts off with strikes. Question mark starts off with strikes. That's fun. Uh, uh, Ricky tries to drop kick. Again, the judo chops are just funny to watch. Colt Cabana's there cheering ringside. Uh, Aaron Strong. Cole Commander got tagged in. Uh, Aaron Strong got tagged in. He just starts to run, run, run around the ring. He needs to perform the headbutt and the wrist to start the wrestling match. Again, the wrestling match doesn't start until there's a headbutt to the wrist. <laughs> then, then the question mark songs is the, is the Mongrovian Spike. I have no idea where they got that name from. Then it was just the trading of chops. And, and this was a different trading of chops. Well, what would happen is that Aaron Strong would come in, give the judo chop. The crowd, boo. Aaron Strong then tags with a question mark. Question mark gives a judo chop. Yay! Much to Aaron Strong's dislike. So he would tag back in. Ah! Uh, boo. Tags in the question mark. Yay! So that was that was different. I like different stuff. And then Colt and Colt Boom Boom Kumbana comes in. He gets a hot tag. Uh, beats up. Oh, I even forget. Oh, that's right. He beats up uh, Aaron Strong. Grabs him. Grabs him by the scarves. Why do heels wear scarves anyway? Why don't faces wear scarves? So that, that must be a heel thing. Uh, from there, again, Cornette just rips the sink face because they were just doing hip checks. And Cornette's like, well, at least they're not sticking each other's ass in their face. Oh, and Aaron Strong, by the way, moons the crowd too. We had a full moon over a hot lanta that day. Again, he just, he just rips. Oh, um, Ricky starts to rip the mask. That's a no-no. Eventually, he does get hit by the Mongrovian Spike. Uh, Aaron Strong wants the pin. He tags himself in. He gets, that's the pin. Aaron Strong and a question mark win. A good cheeseburger match. Uh, 
And then James Strong has a promo to close the match. And Camille, who, who has some long legs, whispers something to James Storm, and he turns all happy. He's going. And locks off. And that was NWA Power Hour. Wow, that was a quick show. Not a lot of wrestling. The promos are really quick and simple. And that was a full show, folks. Can I like to thank you if you were hung around and watched? For I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. Yeah, normally I'm here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, this Thursday I'm going to have my predictions. Tomorrow I'm going to have my AEW show up at its normal time. Uh, Thursday I'll get my predictions up for War Games and Survivor Series. Friday will be SmackDown, Saturday War Games, and Sunday Survivor Series. And it'll be Monday. Well, actually, we'll do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Show Thursday, which will be the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League, run by this guy, Hobo Tom. And then Saturday, and then I think there might be something the first the first of the month. I forget. But then, you know what happens the 30th? My band's lifted. Yes. 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 So everyone have, um, probably by the time this is up, a good morning or day. Bye.